All right, what's happening? My fourth appearance on Big Steve is coming up on this one. Um, this will be broken into two clips. Steve talks for a while in the beginning and talks about some really cool shit. I laid out some posters here that kind of exemplify what he's speaking of. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and keep on listening. Uh, Big Steve, my fourth appearance. Uh, July 8th, okay? You know what? We are fresh and ready, and new things are happening. I just tell you, this vision quest I've been on right now has turned me into a new person for us all. And you've got to understand that everything is threaded together in the universe. Everything is touching each other all the time. And we, as deadheads of the deadhead nation, you, as new people in this world, you, as old, strong sages of this world, come together now and listen to me. And clearly, from now on, we have a new thing truth we speak everything of the truth now of the grateful dead and what we have become in this world don't think i'm barking up a wrong tree with you if i am you will figure it out pretty quick here we are responsible for a thread to the old and the new i call it something really simple that i picked up a long time ago it's a future cast from a distant past and that is what i'm touching right now and I know every one of you understands the vision quest that you have to go on in your life. But don't forget that we've got each other. And through the music, we can be something. We can be proud of who we are. We can make it something really special. I'm telling you, I want you all to listen to me. And let's come together and think about the earth that we live on. This earth binds us all together. This earth is what we have. And that's what connects us all. And out here, when you travel in America, the highways and the byways, you see all kinds of people. You see everybody who still makes up America. It's always been a melting pot. It always will be a melting pot, just as we are in the Deadhead Nation. And I want you all to open your hearts to that and to look at every person openly and freely as they need to look at us too, you know, in the same way. We gotta find a common ground here. We got to. There's going to be tests. There's going to be big tests on all of us. And, you know, the Grateful Dead, we loved ecology, guys. I want to tell you, back in the 60s, right away in the 70s, we had garbage cans for this put in at Winterland and that, so you would, people would start, you know, um, recycling and all that stuff. We knew about that. When I was a little kid, they taught us about conservation of the earth and the soil. We are now the first people. We are the ones that it's entrusted to. And every one of you got to pull together. We've got each other. And we gotta build off of this. And we gotta make people understand how important this is. We're at a crossroads. We really are. The earth needs us now. And we need the earth. Everybody who loves the Grateful Dead has to understand the music. And the beauty of the music has brought that up. And, you know, we had so much beautiful things happen, the magic of the Grateful Dead, and going to the places that we did and traveling everywhere. We would always, I couldn't figure out when I was a kid and we were doing all this stuff, how do you find the heart of America? How do you get to all these places we were traveling to? And it was the first people that I started studying and telling everybody about. This is where this tribe was. This is where these people lived. This is where they eked out a living and barely made it. And, you know, Never forget that we're connected to all that. But the earth is what we're fighting for now, and the spirits are there to help us. I don't know, but I'm telling you, at one time, Mickey Hart, the wonderful person that he is, he brought Rolling Thunder to us. And Rolling Thunder was a Shoshone medicine man. And he came and hung with us and lived with us, and he knew us better than we knew ourselves in so many ways and taught us so much. And, and, you know, he used to always break out the sage and sage our houses, sage anything that we had, our equipment, all this stuff. And I'm going to ask all of you to start doing that. It's a magic thing, but it brings good spirits and it brings good strength and energy. Think about it and, and start, you know, saging your life a little bit. Open the windows and do it like he did and let all the energy move out that you don't want in your life and bring in the good energy and bring in the strong energy. We need to do this because we are all going to be tested. 
You know, one time, the Jerry Garcia band, we got our first truck ever. And we were doing a show at the Catalyst in Santa Cruz, California. And so, Kid drove his car down. He had this BMW, a white one, and I drove the truck that day. And we went down Highway 17, one of the windiest, roughest highways in California. And we went to the show, and we did the show at the Catalyst, and the band played amazing, and a lot of great stuff happened that day. I could tell you all about that. But earlier in the afternoon, Rolling Thunder's son, Buffalo Horse, he came to see me because he was living and working in Santa Cruz at the time. And Buffalo Horse saw the new truck, and he said, Steve, let me, let me sage the truck. Let me sage it for you. Let me do this. And it's your new horse, he called it, you know, and I said, okay, Buff, you know, go ahead, get your stuff now, sage, burnt in a coffee can, fanned with an eagle feather. And when you got that eagle feather given to you, and that sage, and that can, it was special to you, believe me. And so, I let Bo uh, Buffalo Horse say he blew it under the smoke, under where their driver sat, everywhere in the back of this brand new truck. And so we went in, did the gig, and then that night I was driving home in the pouring rain. The rain started right at 2 a.m. when we were, I was leaving about 3 a.m. And I'm driving up 17 by myself. There was hardly anyone out. It was raining like crazy, and I whipped and whacked around those corners with the whole truck full of the band equipment. And just me thinking about all this stuff of the day and and just driving, driving hard to get to Stinson Beach where we all live. And so I really tore into it. And then way later, I got up right before the Golden Gate Bridge at the approaches on 19th Avenue. And I was going slower. And then I, we tried to hit the lights in those days for 30. They were set for 30 miles an hour and you could just get right to the bridge. And so I came to a red light and I stopped. And when I felt the steering wheel, it was loose. It was spinning weirdly out of place. And so I was able, there was no one else around. This is about 4.30 in the morning. I pull over to the side and I get out and I looked under the truck and this brand new truck, the right side, the steering mechanism, had ripped loose from the wheel. It tore loose. The metal literally tore loose. And that wheel was free on the right side. And it broke completely loose right there on that straightaway, on that spot where I could at least pull over to the side. If it had happened on 17, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. You know, I'm not saying that it was the sage that did it. But I'm saying it was the universe that protects what it has to. And don't ever forget, the universe is around us. And beyond that, there is something else. It's been spoken by very intelligent people. But I'm going to get to the callers now. And I All right. <laughs> I'm cutting this one in half before GoPro does it for me. hate to be using a GoPro, but I use it. Um, if you like this one, definitely click on to the next part because my uh, question for Steve is just about to come on. They are just about to answer. So hit a like and click on to this next video right here, or it might be right there, and that'll take you into the second part of what you just heard. All right. Keep on listening.